After years of planning, a legendary American champion racer will soon start building his own high-end cars in China. However, despite growing Chinese demand for environmentally friendly cars, the world's largest consumer market has also experienced 13 straight months of declining sales of Chinese-made cars. At the same time, the trade war continues to smolder. President Donald Trump on Tuesday threatened tariffs on another $325 billion worth of Chinese goods. Nevertheless, Steve Salian and his Chinese partners have now completed their first two production plants, and they recently announced plans to establish a research center focusing on China's automotive industry. What makes Salian so hopeful about China? That he continues to invest so heavily here. And what makes him optimistic about electric vehicles as his two plans may produce tens of thousands of these pricey cars. I'm placed to be joined in the studio by Steve Salian, the former racing champion and founder of Salian Automotive. Welcome to The Point, Mr. Salian. Well, thank you. You've Great had interests in China, in the Chinese market for quite a while now. You sought out local partnership more than 10 years ago. Um, what drew you to the Chinese market back then and what is attractive to you now? Well, I, I, it's always been the same same thing. I think the um, uh, one, I love the, the Chinese people. I love the culture that's here, and I think that um, uh, the my love with the automobile and the development of what we do at Celine, I think, is the timing is right to uh, bring that more into the Chinese market. But then on the business side, what kind of opportunities? yell at you and say, you know, this is the time we have to get into the Chinese market right now? Well, I think, first of all, the Chinese market, even as you mentioned, is on a decline. It still is the largest automotive market in the world. So you're, you're selling 25 million vehicles a year, and that's still a significant amount of vehicles. And what I look at from the Celine brand is that we have a very unique, we have a very distinctive style. We concentrate more on the performance side, on the thrill of driving. And from my exposure here in China over the last 10 years, I find that there's more and more of a growing demand for the type of vehicles that we produce. You mentioned some of the changes the Chinese market has undergone, including declining sales. Um, here's what's been happening. Wholesale of Chinese and big passenger vehicles um, have actually f fallen eight, more than 8% in June. And uh, that metric has now declined in China for 13 consecutive months. When you look at those data and those numbers, does that worry you about future pos prospects here in China as your plans get ready to roll off? No, um, really not, not, not really, because we're focusing on a void in the market that we think exists here in China, and that is for the type of products that are more performance-oriented offer a different driving experience for the consumer. And we've seen from our research that, uh, that that has not been fulfilled. And we feel that with our product, it's the right product at the right time. Can we talk specifically about the product here, the S1? Yes. How does it fill the void? Well, we, we are, we're offering a supercar level of performance at a very um, cost-effective price. And there isn't, it really isn't just China, it's throughout the world on a global basis. The level of performance with the S1, 450 horsepower in a car that weighs 26, 2700 pounds with the aerodynamics that we've developed um, for that car, there really isn't a car in the world that competes with it. And my experience here in China shows that there really is a pent up demand here once the car is exposed to the consumer that they would like to have a car like that. But this is a very niche market, isn't it? Mm -hmm. As you know, as a lot of as the middle class here in China grows, a lot of people are just beginning to buy cars and we're talking about, you know, a supercar that's performance centered. Yes, but but it is but it's a daily driver car. What's nice about this, unlike our our supercar the S seven that we developed that um, has a lot more horsepower and a lot higher price tag. The S1 is a car that the, that the people can drive on a daily basis. It gets good fuel economy. It has all the creature comforts. 
and it's just the first of many of the vehicles that we're looking at out uh, bringing out of the with the Celine brand. Talk to us about the production plans and the research center um, that will help the Celine business here in China. Well, we're very happy with uh, we have a great relationship with the Rugal government, and um, we have just completed the construction of a large facility up in Rugal that can pr produce hundred thousands of vehicles per year. And um, in, a, in addition to that, we've used the most modern techniques that makes the car manufacturing very efficient. We have a lot of robotics and all of the, which gives us a little bit of an advantage because we're able to blend what we've learned from racing and the niche markets, as you said, and bring that into more of the mass consumer um, vehicles that the consumer can uh, enjoy. In addition to it, as what you asked, we also offered and have just formed a research center, or if you will, a think tank um, that is involv involving not just us, but a lot of the automobile manufacturers on developing where the future of the automobile is going. And I think that over time, the technology, what we learn out of the think tank and the way that we're applying the technology here will be very advantageous for us at Celine and for the Chinese uh, automotive in general. In your very personal opinion, where will the future be going? Are we talking about electric cars? Because electric cars are now huge, not just here in China, but globally as well. Chinese consumers are just beginning to adapt to the idea, to the concept of electric cars. But the debate on what cars work better on a daily basis, traditional cars that run on gasoline or electric cars, that, that debate is still on especially here in China. Yes, and, and I think that will continue for a while. I think there's no doubt that the electric vehicles are the future, and there's certainly, we have some electric vehicles in our current lineup as well. But the demise of the gasoline engine is, I think, premature as well, to where we're able to get better fuel economy, um, better response, uh, better emissions, uh, so that I think for uh, a number of years yet that you will still see the advancements with gasoline uh, engines as well as the infrastructure starts building for electric vehicles. I want to talk to you about this big business backdrop that um, worries and concerns a lot of businessmen like you who do business between China and America. The trade frictions between Beijing and Washington continue where the two sides have just decided to resume negotiations. What aspect of that ongoing trade war impacts your business here in China and what are your worries and concerns? Well, I, I think, um, I certainly agree with you that it's um, uh, a very wor worrisome uh, aspect of it. The, um, we live in, a, in really a global economy, and there isn't a single manufacturer in the world that single sources in their own country. The automobile industry now sources from literally around the world. So it isn't just our particular case, it really is the whole economy Absolutely. that will have an effect on the, on the uh, trade war. My hope, my desires, and my, my gut tells me that the, uh, we're dealing with people that have very good intelligence um, that are making these decisions, and I think that that over a period of time that the, the the answer will resolve itself, so that it doesn't affect. Ultimately, it's the consumer because the consumer is paying the price, which will just raise up the prices for for uh, businesses to be able to cope with the uh, the extra added um, costs. The consumers will take a hit, no doubt, but how would tariffs on vehicles and auto parts reverberate across the global supply chain? Well, it just virtually everything we buy. So if we, we end up, as we import a lot of things into the U.S., we have to pay tariffs on that. And then those tariffs, some of it can be absorbed by the companies and some of it can't be. It gets to a point where the company then will have to pass on through price increase on the product which in ultimately the consumer will have to pay for it. It really is pretty simple math, and I think that um, the powers to be and will certainly recognize what's at stake and, and will find a, the appropriate solutions. 
let's also talk about car culture. Um, you're from Southern California, where there is a mass of car culture. But car culture here in China is just beginning to form. Um, people have been educated about it. People start to form their very own opinions about car culture. But still, it's budding. What's your take on China's car culture and the difference between that and the car culture back in the United States? Well, I'm, I've been watching all over the years here is that 10 years ago, the car culture or cars were not very prevalent throughout the Chinese market. And over the, the last number of years, it really has accelerated. And uh, you, you said before we went on air here, you said you were from or you went to USC in Southern California. I actually started the car club in, in USC. We had a car show that, uh, that I organized to get that culture going. And I find really the climate here to be very similar. It depends a lot on the product that's offering, the enthusiasm. And I think as, as the, um, China becomes much more involved with cars, not just from daily transportation, but from a lifestyle, the culture will, will evolve. And from my standpoint, we would like to be, we, we aren't going to control it, but we would like to be part of that culture, utilizing my racing background, our manufacturing, our design uh, aspects of it to help, help uh, encourage different uh, cultures and specifically with the car. And that leap from everyday use to culture certainly affects their choices when it comes to what kind of cars they will buy. I'm afraid, great conversation. I'm afraid that's all the time we have. A pleasure to meet you and have you on our program today. Thank well, you. Well, thanks. And, and remember, we have Celine Night, too, coming up here in Beijing. So all right. Congrats. we invite you for that this Saturday night. Thank you so much. Congratulations on the production plans and the research center. Thank, Thank you. you. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of The Point. You're always welcome to check us out on our social media page. I'm Dong Shi. On behalf of the whole team here, thank you for watching.